guys, today we kind of did a lot of miscellaneous stuff. We did the skylight, we did some plumbing, and I did some painting for our walls. And so in this video, we will show you the skylight that I love. I'm so excited that we can have two of them. And then we will explain what we did with the plumbing and um, what we used and how we did it. And then I will also show you our walls. So we decided we wanted some textured walls and off-white. It took a little while to get there, but I will show you how to do what our walls will be. And then also we finished our cushions. And so we went and picked out our cushion fabric that we were gonna use and hopefully can get going on those soon. So we will keep you updated. We are removing the emergency exit and we're gonna replace it with plexiglass on top. We're just gonna do a skylight. It's got a cover on it right now, so it doesn't get scratched, but it's gonna be clear. And we're gonna actually gonna cut another hole up front for a second skylight. We were gonna buy some skylights off some skylight website and it was like 150 bucks for one that was almost this size. Yeah, we were gonna make it work. And then my wife had the idea to just get plexiglass because that's pretty much all we were ordering. So we got two pieces for $75. So that's what we're gonna show you guys how to do today. How we would get this emergency exit off the roof is we would use the heat gun and just get the glue really hot and put a little pressure, like pry up in spots. And I'll show you kind of how it works. It just gets the glue very thin and then it just comes apart. So it works really good. So most of the screws are coming out pretty easily. I don't know if you can tell, but like you can see there's like a little bit of a square shape and that's like the head of the screw. So like, I don't have to dig them all out, which has been nice. And I thought this was gonna take me probably 30 minutes and it's been about two, three minutes in and this is how far I've got. So over halfway done, but pretty simple. You can just see as it gets, hotter then it just starts to just come apart it's leaning out right now so that's why it's got a little bit of pressure on it but it worked really good okay it is completely removed all we got to do is take these rounded edges off square them up and then we'll throw down the sticky tape or the sealant and we'll have a skylight oh and obviously the uh, skylight itself I put the tape down and I just ran it along all the edges and then I'll screw this down and then I'll go around with caulk and I'll caulk all the the seams and edges and the screw holes everything it's all caulked up it's not the prettiest um, but it's also on the roof I'm not too worried about it all right so it's raining pretty good and it's holding up. We had some pretty big pieces of hail. I mean, you can see it's just a little bit smaller than my fingernail, but it's holding up pretty good in the rain. I uh, got on a local, it's actually a Utah website called KSL, and they sell pretty much anything you want. They have categories for anything. And I got on there and I was looking at motorhome parts and found a water tank and a pump um, 325 bucks and so that saved us a little bit of money um, and it was three minutes away from here so I picked it up and now we got our our water system already done here is our plumbing that Nathan has been working on so here is our water tank there is a filter right over here that the water will go through before coming out um, go through our water pump water pump will pump it over here obviously then this is where our cold water will come out of and then it goes into the sink and i'll show you that in a little bit but then the other water will come into our tankless water heater warm up go out and then this is our hot water both of those tubes um we drilled holes into our cabinet for underneath the sink so Hot water is hooked up to the hot water. Cold water hooked up to the cold water. It's running over there to our outdoor shower. We got our PEX crimping tool here. So this is all PEX plumbing that we use. So pretty much how it works is I already have that slid on. So you'll cut the pipe wherever you need it, slide it on, 
make sure you have one of these on. And what these do, you use this. If you can see that. And you crimp it closed and then you have, and that's it, that's super simple. And then you have your tight water. We've just been using pecs like the elbow ones and um, oh, those are more elbow ones, but like obviously the crimping ones and even some straight pex ones to connect it. But like Nathan said, super easy. Um, just got to make sure to get that bracket in there so it's tight and secure. And then it's really cheap too. Show you real quick. You slide this on over first. You slide this in. A slide. It's a, it even has little stoppers so you don't go too far. Make sure you're where you want it. Slide over, super easy. And we just got the crimper off of Amazon and it came with a pipe cutter and some crimping brackets already. So it was a good start to it, but we definitely had to buy some more. So this is just our outdoor shower right here. Nathan's hooking up the cold water. The hot water's already hooked up, but as you can see, that is how we'll adjust how much, how hot and how cold we want our water. And then our shower head right there. We are trying out our water system, putting water into our tank. So Nathan will have to describe this to you, but we just got a lot of pipes and tubes and put them together. We had to do it all very custom. This thing's for like sprinklers. This is for like, I think pools. That little piece is for pools, but we got it all figured out. It was just weird because we bought just the tank and then we had to buy the, uh, whatever this thing's the called. Inlet. The inlet, yeah. And it just, we had to do a lot of custom things, but it works. If the, if it's on all the way high, it leaks out of this. It like, cause it's, there's really, the only thing we did was glue around that. So one of these days I'll have to get some caulk and caulk around it when it's dry. Um, and then I spilt some glue there and there's some water that's leaked out, but right there is where we, um, if we ever want to drain the system, we can just do it right there. Work. Here's the outdoor shower. Turn that on. Here are the wall pieces that I'm going to be texturizing and painting today. So first step is to sand. They're rough edges just from the cut and so I need to sand, make sure they're all smooth and then make sure to round that edge off. Here is what I'm going to be using. It's just, it's actually for sheetrock, the all purpose like for drywall and plaster patching repairs. It's we just had this actually around from one of Nathan's other side jobs and so then this is just plaster knife that I'm going to use and so I'll kind of show you how I'm gonna do that. Like I said we had it before so it's definitely used but this is what it'll look like and you're just mainly just going to scrape and pull you're just gonna put it on random places and scrape and the more that you have it the more like you get to decide how textured you want the wall to be so i could leave it like that and it could be a big clump and then i will take some sanding over it sometimes you know you play around with the pressure of it you like to have um pressured a lot and it smooths it out and then also doing um less pressure makes it a lot more textured like that so Here is it after the mudding. So if you guys remember, I had two big like lines from the wood ripping kind of pulling off and you just mud those up, even it out and then make some more texture. So that's not a big deal. You don't need a flat surface, of course. And this one looks like it's more mudded. It may very well be, but this is lighter wood too. That one's like a little bit of darker shade. So it's easier to see the white, but really there's not a perfect way to do it. I just kind of slap it on and move it with the knife whichever way I feel is good so I'm gonna let this dry and then I will sand it and then it's paint time
they have been drying out in the sun. Now I'm going to take, this is a finer sand paper, a sanding block. So I'm just gonna lightly sand over them. It will be super powdery, but then I will paint. I'm all ready to paint, as you can see. I brought them inside because it was kind of windy outside, and so I didn't want any bugs or dirt sticking on the paint. But also, one of the boards had fallen off the sawhorse, and so I, just to be safe, I wanted to bring in here. But so this is all sanded. I don't sand very much because I want that big contrast and texture. And so you definitely could sand more, and it wouldn't be as dramatic. That's the beauty of it. If you sand too much, you can just add more and let it dry in a little bit. cushions today for the bench and we definitely were trying to go a cheaper option but still very functional so we just got three inch camper pad and we just cut these pieces a little bit shorter so that it's not pokey on the edge and so we will just wrap the fabric around and then staple it so we just measured out chalked the line Nathan's been cutting it sanding it and then we bought this spray adhesive we put the weight on to make sure that the corners go down really good but that's how we're making them we hope you guys enjoyed our video make sure to subscribe and like to follow along for our future videos to see our bus build and see our final rebuild thanks for watching